Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker. And for this lesson, we're going to talk about a little bit of baseball math, or what I call baseball math. We're going to go over a couple calculations that are very relevant to hitters and pitchers, right? We're going to talk about batting average, how to calculate batting average, and also ERA, or earned run average. All right? So, um, batting average, right? And I got a lot of abbreviations up here, a lot of acronyms, right, that you may or may not be already familiar with. So batting average is going to be equal to the number of hits you have divided by your number of at-bats. So let's say you want to find your batting average after about three games, right? Let's say the first game you went, um, so let's say game one, you went one for three. Then in game two, you went three for four. Not bad. Then in game three, you go, you ain't have a good game in game three, or maybe that pitcher was just that good. He had your number, struck you out a couple times or whatever, right? So you went 0 for 3. All right, let's say that. All right, so what you would do <clears throat> in order to calculate your batting average is you basically take all your hits, right? You want to add them up, right? The sum of your hits. So sum means addition, right? So you add up all your hits. So then we got one hit plus three hits plus zero hits. All together, that's four hits. All right. So in this fraction, right, hits over at bats, you're going to replace the variable. We can think of it as a variable. This is kind of like, well, it's not kind of. It exactly is doing algebra, even if it don't seem like it, even if it's related to something that we find fun like baseball, right? It still is algebra. It's a lot of algebra in baseball, a lot of math in baseball, a lot of geometry in baseball and all that, right? So 1 plus 3 plus 0 is 4, so we're going to replace the variable H with a 4 because that's how many hits you had. Then AB is your at-bats. How many at-bats did you have? So since you went 1 for 3, in that first game, you had 3 at-bats. 3 for 4, second game, you had 4 at-bats. 0 for 3, you had 3 at-bats. So 3 plus 4 is 7, 7 plus 3 is 10. So that's going to be your total number of at-bats. Now, what you do is you want to convert this into a decimal and you round it to three decimal places, all right? Convert it to a decimal, round it to three decimal places. Now, pretty much, if you're hitting 300 or better, then you're considered to be a good hitter, right? But think about what that means for a minute. Um, this is 300 out of 1,000, right? Or like that's like equivalent to being like, like three out of 10. 300 out of 1,000 is equivalent to three out of 10, right? So imagine you strike out seven times, you get you get on base three times, or you hit three times, get three hits, you still good, right? Just think about that for a minute, right? Let that sink in, all right? So four out of 10, if you divide that on your calculator, that's going to give you 0.400. This was an easy one. I didn't even need a calculator for this. Four out of 10 is going to give you 400. So that means you're batting 400. That would be your batting average. So basically what you can do is, after every game that you play, you can calculate your own batting average. So even though like a statistician might give it to you, you can even, you know, check their work, make sure it's correct. You know, run your own numbers, you know, do your own math, right? To take more ownership over your career. And then also what you can do is you can say, all right, well, if I want to reach a certain batting average by the end of the season, it's even more math you can do and more formulas you can use to try to figure out like, okay, well, what, what, do, I, what do I need? Um, how many hits do I need to get in this next game? in order to bring my average up to this level or to bring my average up to this level or that level, right? We can do all these things. Once we understand math and we get more comfortable with math, then we can kind of maneuver and we can make some things happen, all right? But in this, based on this scenario, um, out of these three games, right, the batting average was 400. But let's, let's, let, let, me, let me do something real quick. I just thought of this. Let's find the individual batting average for each game. So here, one for three, would be one divided by three. And I just know at the top of my head, that would be a batting average of 333. So for game one, the batting average was 333. That's a three at the end. Now for game two, that would be three divided by four, which would be 0.750, right? So in game one, you hit 333. In game two, you hit 750. And in game three, that's gonna be zero over three. And we know that anytime you divide zero by any number, you just end up with zero. So for that game, you had a batting average of zero, 
right? And remember, we round it, we take it out to three decimal places, all right? So understand how the combination of a 333, a 750, and a zero balances out to a 400, all right? A 400 batting average overall for those three games. So it's just something for you to think about. This is the formula for, um, bat, for calculating batting average. And if you understand formulas and understand how formulas work and know how to do the algebra and the math involved, then you can use any formula. It doesn't matter what the scenario is, whether you're in chemistry class, whether you were in a geometry class, formulas are formulas are formulas, right? If you learn how to use them in one context, then you can learn how to use them in another context, all right? Now, let's look at ERA. Let's say you're a pitcher, right? And the way pitchers are judged is by earned run average. Earned run average, that's the acronym. The E stands for earned, R stands for runs, A stands for average. So that's your earned run average. Now, check this out. This is the formula right here. The number of earned runs, right? Because that's important. That's a whole other conversation because some runs are, are not earned, right? If there's errors going on, right? Somebody drops the ball and somebody should have got thrown out, right? And somebody scores, that's not an earned run, right? So we got earned runs divided by IP. IP stands for innings pitched. How many innings did you pitch? Multiply by the total number of innings, right? In a game. So if we're doing an earned run average for just one game, um, let's say I think I remember back in the day I played for like um, Northwood Baseball League, you know, way back in the day, Little League, um, a full game was six innings. Pretty sure we played six innings. So the total innings will be six innings. So let's say somebody pitched, I don't know, four innings, four of those innings, and then their arm got a little tired, you know, they lost their velocity, people started hitting them all over the place, and they got taken out and replaced by somebody else. So let's say um, they gave up four earned runs. So our ER is going to be four. We're going to replace the earned runs with a four. And they only pitched for four innings. And the whole game had a total of six innings, right? So at a total of six innings. So what you would do is, I mean, it's a couple ways we could do this. You could do four divided by four and then multiply that by six. Four divided by four is going to be one. One times six is going to be six. So that's 6.00. And with the ERA, you want to round that to two decimal places. So 6.00, right? Which is considered to not be that good because you want to keep your ERA below four. Anything below four is seen as good. Anything below three is even better. And if it's below two, that's great. Somebody with an ERA below two, that means you hardly ain't giving up no earned runs, right? But hopefully you got a strong defense behind you, right, that does what they're supposed to do. So you're not giving up a lot of unearned runs. Because if you're giving up a lot of unearned runs, your team might still be losing anyway. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, the other way we could have did this was you could multiply straight across. You could do four times six and get 24. And then from the 24, you divide that by four. 24 divided by four is still six. So that's an ERA of six either way. All right. So this is just a little something I wanted to just, you know, talk about a little bit. Um, it's January 2023. Spring training for a lot of people is going to start in a couple months. And matter of fact, some people play baseball all year round. So um, I'm trying to do more relevant content, you know, make content as relevant as possible because a lot of students, a lot of young people be sitting in math class complaining. They be mad. Like, when am I going to use this stuff? Why well, I need to know this? And what they don't understand sometimes and what the teachers don't always understand, what the teachers don't always tell them is like, like, listen, even if you're sitting in my class right now and you feel like this is boring, you feel like this is irrelevant. If you learn how to use formulas in this in this subject or based on this subject that we're talking about right now in this math class, then you can take them same formulas and learn how to apply them formulas to things that you do care about, things that you love, things that you like doing. Right. Things that you enjoy. Right. And that's something that we got to realize. So that's why on the All This Math YouTube channel, I'm creating a lot of content like this. Relevant math, right? Everyday math, you know? Um, and it's all types of statistics and formulas and everything in baseball, football, basketball. I mean, you got people with PhDs in mathematics and statistics working for different sports teams, you know, running the stats, trying to run the numbers and trying to like create scenarios and models and everything to try to ensure that they win. You know, because that's what they're trying to do, right? Because teams want to win, right? And we when we talk about professional sports, we're talking about a multi, multi, multi-billion dollar industry. So they don't want to leave nothing up to chance. And that's why math comes in, because with math, 
we can minimize losses, right? If we run the formulas properly. So that's just something for us to think about. And that's part of the reason I wanted to put this out there. Also, as an athlete, when you start, when you're able to calculate your own stats, it's, it's really a form of power. It's a form of power that you have because you don't got to wait for somebody else to tell you what your stats are. Because then if somebody else is telling you what your stats are, then, you know, somebody else is really dictating, you know, the public perception of you. Like, are you good? Are you bad? How good are you? You know, all this and that, right? So I want young people especially to be able to understand the math that's behind their statistics. And I want for young, I would like for young people to be able to calculate their own statistics and whatnot and so forth. So yeah, it's just something to think about. So next time you're playing baseball, calculate your batting average. You know, do it on your own, do it in your head, break out a little calculator, use the calculator on your phone. It ain't that difficult. If you pitch, be able to calculate your ERA, all right? And now that you know it, share that with somebody else, all right? And I'll catch up, catch up with y'all in the next video. Peace.